Hi there folks, welcome back to another video. Well, today's video is just going to be about how I winterize my plants. And I'm just learning, honestly. I'm certainly no green thumb. But I'm just going to show you what I'm doing and just show you the condition of my plants at this time of year. Actually, um, trees and shrubs to be more specific. So uh, let's get going and see if we can try to take care of these guys before it gets even colder than it has been. So this was one of four gorgeous polonia trees that I planted. Uh, the Latin name is Polonia arctica, meaning it's supposed to deal well with cold weather. So I hope so. So those of you who've been following my videos, remember they had beautiful, big, gorgeous leaves. So they're deciduous. So that means that the leaves do fall off. And I'm just leaving all the leaves here just to add uh, mulch or, or just some extra biological matter for them. And you'll also see something really important here is that um, I've cut them. This one was uh, almost five feet tall and I cut them down because uh, <clears throat> that allows the energy over winter to just be uh, put into this small section and uh, that's what I was informed to do by the one who sold me these. Hopefully next spring these will grow again and uh, get really, really nice and tall. And what happens is the new growth comes out from the bottom and then you just select the strongest uh, stalks or stalk to uh, be your main tree. So I'm going to add plenty of what's called an Omni all-in-one seed cover and planting compost. So instead of just mulch, I'm actually going to put this stuff on. And it's not too bad. It's about um, $4 a bag at uh, Ace Hardware. So I'm going to use a lot of this today. Oh, and this company is not sponsoring me? Hmm, I wish they did, but anyway. <laughs> So one good thing is I can tell that it's still moist here in the ground. So uh, that means the roots should be okay. And uh, I'll just make sure I, of course, water these really well this winter. But now for the compost. So what this should do is uh, allow protection for the roots during uh, the freezes. I've got lots and lots of compost here, probably about uh, hmm, probably eight inches thick or so. And um, my understanding is you can't have too much compost. So if you look too, folks, you'll see I've dug a whole circle around the main plant. And the reason I've done that is I'll fill that all up with compost and in the years to come the roots can actually access all of the nutrition and hopefully that will give the uh, tree a really good uh, period of growth as it gets bigger. So I might add a little more um, at some point, but I think this is going to do for now. So since I don't want the mule deer to come by and nibble things, then I'll uh, replace the uh, metal fencing I put around it. And that'll keep the muleys out of there. There we go. So they're pretty sneaky and come in at night, but I can tell that the pond has lowered significantly in just the last few days. So that would tell me that the mule deer are coming in to drink again. There, so uh, this should cover up the roots really nicely and help avoid any issues with freezing, even though this is supposed to be a cold, hardy tree. We'll give it a bit of water a little bit later. 
again will protect them from the mule deer and the rabbits. So the poor old oleander didn't seem real happy with some of the heavy frost we had. So the tops and the tender parts of them died. So I don't know whether the whole plant's going to die or not. Um, but uh, the cool thing is the roots should stay intact because last year they survived. Um, although they had to grow again all the way up from the roots. So I don't know how else to take care of them except for to put more mulch on them and water them well. We'll see. Well, winter is approaching, that's for sure. It's doing its annual shedding of all the leaves, which is understandable. Really huge. So I did a little bit of research, folks, and I found out a bit about these giant caterpillars. They belong to a species called rustic sphinx moth. What's neat about rustic sphinx moths is that they love blooms like my desert willow here. And they have this huge long tongue that they insert into the bloom when they're feeding. They look just like a hummingbird, so if you were looking at them feeding here when it was almost dark, you would think, oh, hummingbird's kind of out late, but it's feeding on the uh, desert willow. And instead, it would have been one of those big rustic sphinx moths. Pretty cool, eh? So what I'm doing here, folks, is um, I was told that if you want this to be a tree, you got to trim off the lower branches, so that's what I'm doing. So all my beautiful Cosmos flowers have gone to seed for the most part, and uh, lots and lots of seeds. And I'm not sure whether to leave them here for the birds or scatter them around just to add more of them to the yard. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Oh, I wanted to mention a much belated thank you to an anonymous giver who gave me this awesome 10 ton hydraulic jack. And um, I've been given a few of these as gifts and the reason why I need several of them is if I choose to jack up the cabin, which was to be the plan, then uh, I'll be able to have something to do so. So thank you very much. So I'm really happy with these Eldarica, I think I'm pronouncing it correct, pines or Afghan pines. This guy has got new growth on him this year. He's getting nice and bushy. So I'm really happy about that. So as you can see, uh, this guy here, uh, I've created these big circles, kind of donut shaped circles where I can add lots of mulch to uh, provide lots of nutrition for my pine trees here. I ran out of mulch, so unfortunately this guy's going to have to wait for another day. I have two of these little Texas Rangers. Um, they're super tough. Um, these guys seem to be slow to really take off, but they had beautiful purple or blue blooms on them uh, during the monsoon season. And I think they'll stay green uh, over the winter. I just gotta make sure I give them enough water. But they're pretty tough, and that's what we need here in this kind of climate. Expert tree folks have told me that um, not only do I need to trim my desert willow, which I did, um, I need to trim all the branches down uh, from about here on my cottonwood tree so then um, it grows into a nice big tree with a nice canopy. So I'm going to give that a trim too.
I don't think the mule deer are going to be happy. They won't be able to reach their favorite snack, which is this tree. Yeah, I'm going to call myself out on this. Uh, yeah, I need to buy um, pruning shears uh, or whatever they called. I've never been a gardener guy, so uh, or a landscaper, but definitely need something better than a steak knife for next time, right? <laughs> Doing great. Well, as always, folks, thanks so much for joining me on another video. I really appreciate your support. And if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. Love to have you on board. And also, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. I answer every one. Also, if you want to know when the next video is coming up, click the notification bell. That'll let you know when the next one's posted. So thanks again, folks, for all your support. It's now been two years as of October that I've had this uh, channel up and running, and it's far exceeded any expectations I might have had. And that's because of you folks that are kind enough to watch. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next video.